You know, sometimes you just have to last, laugh at... I, I cannot speak. I am flabbergasted. Folks, I, I, I'm not going to walk through the community update line by line. It's like nearly 3,000 words. I want to point out some sincere concerns I have, like just kind of reading between the lines. And I overall, I think it is a possibly very good positive move. But I got some big concerns. And there are things in here that I think are being potentially overlooked. And I want to draw it to your attention. And I hope that it does not turn out the way it could given CG's track record. And also coming to us from uh, YouTube viewer Billenberg1043. Thank you for the positive comment on my last video. You said you wanted to hear me beep about the assault battles. You're going to get a chance because that's going to tie in to today's community announcement that is just nuts because Capital Games is out of their mind. Yes, today's community update, it's not just a road ahead. I mean, it's actually more detailed than most of road aheads. It is a clever way of saying, hey, idiots, you can give us $840 a year on subscriptions, basically. Yeah, I'm not kidding. $840 a year. Now, now, I know that you don't have to buy these. I know that. And I know that free to play is mentioned multiple times throughout the post. But if you're free to play, I don't give a damn what it says in that thing. I'm telling you, you will be receiving less rewards likely. I'm giving it a 95% chance you will get less rewards, especially, especially if you have a really developed roster. If you have been in this game for a while and you got like 8 to 9 million GP, if you've been expecting red crate almost every galactic challenge, as soon as those, those challenges hit, if you dash off to Scribe or Bit Dynasty and you watch their videos and you nail that red crate, you are going to be losing rewards. Let me explain. And it's not just losing rewards and $840 a year now in subscription opportunities. Thank you for that, CG. There are other problems, and, and I want to explore those. So first off, <clears throat> to put all this in context, you have to understand this thing. CG is breaking the game, the calendar, the yearly calendar down into four eras a year. Each era will consist of three episodes. Each episode will consist of two marquees. Why do we got to make crap so complicated? I don't know, but it goes like this. Every 14 days or every two weeks, there will be a new marquee character. They're supposed to be thematic. That basically means we're getting 24 marquees a year. Okay, fine. They said in the community post, at the end of each era, we intend to provide a new event or journey guide level unit to pursue using all of the units you've worked to acquire through the era. So if you manage to get a seven star marquee five or six times, you might four times a year be able to get that new journey guide level unit. So does that mean that every three months, there's actually going to be six marquees plus a journey character? That, that if so, is a lot of characters. And it gets worse. See, in 2024, we got 25 units. We got 25 units in 24. Hmm, weird. Okay. But under the new framework dropped on us today, it's going to be a lot more. The character release rate is accelerating. If we indeed get one new marquee unit every two weeks, plus a journey guide, plus galactic legends, plus conquests, it's actually 33 characters. I'm going to show you that in just a second. And then here's how that $840 crap comes into being. Well, we already have a $10 monthly bundle that pack, whatever that you can get for conquest or a $30 pack for conquest. Now to get your rewards, your, your rewards in each of these marquee events, you have an option, not required, but there's an option to spend $20 to get an episode pass or $40 to get the episode pass plus. Why does this matter? Why not, Gerbil? Why don't you just ignore it, right? Just just piss on this and ignore it. The reason is because if the galactic challenges are now tied to whether or not you have an, a, 
an episode past. So you know how right now, Galactic Challenge drops, you dash describe, you watch his video, you win in two minutes, and then you wait three days to get your rewards. That waiting period sucks. Cool thing, that waiting period's going away. The community announcement says that immediately, as soon as you beat it, you claim your your new uh, episode currency. Yes, it's a new currency because we need more currencies in the game. So we have a new episode currency then that you get instead of rewards. You then take that episode currency and you go to the store where you can redeem the episode currency for your galactic for your rewards from your galactic challenge. <clears throat> Confused? Don't worry. How many rewards will you get? Well, below the pictures here of those rewards, it says, it says that free to play players or the free track will get you the equivalent of four red boxes and four gold boxes. That means in that one episode, which is a month, you've got eight galactic challenges. You free to play people and honestly, people like me, because I ain't spending money on this crap, are going to max now at four gold and four red crates. That is a reduction in rewards. It says you should see the same or more rewards um, for the majority of players. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. Um, I do think it will be a net win because we get to pick and choose the rewards we want rather than the arbitrary dumping. It's going to the same model as the raid. And that, my friends, is a good, good thing. Less rewards when you can like spear focus it to what you want is actually a good thing. But it depends what's going to be in that store. It depends what our options are. And they are not clear about that. So let's go back to a second to the galactic challenges. Now there are four feats for each of the galactic challenges. Those are sticking with us. And they gave an example with it. And you'll notice that the third bullet point right below me, it says, win with an active episode pass. So if you want to get that max rewards every time, and then it's weirder than this, in each episode, when you go through your tiers to get all your rewards in the episode track and then the, the challenge, whatever, there, there's not a limit to the number of times you can beat it, which is what this episode pass enables you to do. It gets you a jump start ahead so that you can beat it, claim the max rewards, beat it again, claim the max rewards, whatever. It's, it's kind of, we'll have to see what it looks like, but it basically is a way to differentiate and reward the paying players. In other words, if you're willing to drop $840 a year, you potentially may get double, triple, quadruple the rewards, we don't know yet, from a free-to-play player, further increasing the difference in your power levels versus the free-to-play power levels, which is going to further pull the free-to-plays behind more and more and more and more and more and more, right? Marginalizing. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, so literally... Galactic Challenge rewards are now tied to whether or not you spent 20 bucks a month. If you spend 20 bucks a month, congratulations, instant, here's more rewards for you. The, the fourth bullet point, it, it says win the battle with a three star Hu Yang on your squad. And then it says this is for tiers one and two, escalating to a seven star Hu Yang, and this will be every marquee for the foreseeable future. Whether it's Hu Yang, General Sindula, or next year, whether we get a new Ewok or whatever it's gonna be, little rock people from Peridia, who knows. So that fourth tier is going to be dependent on whether or not you can achieve a seven star. Now, assuming the marquees are released in the same style as they are now, it's about 150 to $200 to seven star a marquee if you just flat out buy the crystals and the packs and then get the dailies. You might be able to do it for less, I don't know. So every month, two marquees. CG wants potentially $300 for that. Every month, an episode pass, $20 or $40. And you need that episode pass probably to get the seven star, where you're probably also gonna have to spend to get that fourth tier. So Galactic Challenges, one fourth of the feeds is flat out linked pay to play. The other one is conditional on how much you're willing to pay to play. And you know what else is crap? It says that, and I am being negative. I'm, I'm super being negative here. It says somewhere in here, uh, maybe I have it on another slide, that the free to play players will receive an equivalent of. An equivalent is a, de that word depends on how, they're, how they are measuring equivalency. Do they mean equivalence one-to-one -one parity? Meaning that previously you got two Omicrons 
per Galactic Challenge, now you will still get that on the free to play track, reward track? Or do they mean you will get an equivalent value in gear? Because I will tell you for most people, two Omicrons is worth a whole lot more than, than 500 crystals or whatever, because those Omicrons are so scarce as is. Ugh. You'd think with 3,000 words they could be more clear, but no, 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 no. So yeah, here we go. More characters. 24 marquees a year, four, each one lit, lit, ending in a new chase unit or event, so to be determined. Assuming we're still getting a Galactic Legend, because they did say, these are quotes, the relationship with the Galactic Legends is still being worked on. That's talking about how the marquees and the eras are going to interact with the Galactic Legend releases. So they haven't figured that out yet, which is, that would have been like an, a top priority if I were working there. How does that work? Like the Galactic Legend is the penultimate goal of the year, so we should be working backwards from there. Like in education, we call it UDL, Universal Design for Learning. In architecture, it's also Universal Design. You start with your endpoint and you work backwards and figure out how to get there. Duh, that's just basic goal setting, right? I want X, how do we get there? They want us to unlock a Galactic Legend, spend a lot of money and time and resources. How do you work everything into it? This, mm, moving on. There's still gonna be Conquest. They say Conquest characters will continue to be released at their current cadence. So we've got potentially 24 marquees, four chases, a Galactic Legend, four Conquests. That's 33 characters a year, potentially. Do some quick math on that. Uh, 52 divided by 33, I don't have a calculator in front of me. That's basically one new character every 12, 10 to 12 days across the entire year. Who's got that kind of money to pay? Because if it's you, if you're watching, you got that kind of money, please send me a private message in Discord. I have a, a bridge in San Francisco I'd love to sell you. It's a very lucrative offer, I promise. Um, so the next thing in here is the daily box rewards. <sighs> They have a good quality of life in here. You can use any of your energies to contribute to your guild tickets. That's great. They've reduced the number of daily required activities for your payout, daily payouts, from like whatever it is now, like 12 of them, to just seven. So you don't have to go in and do both an arena and a fleet battle because let's face it, everybody goes into arena and immediately hits exit. It's just an absolute waste of time. You don't have to do that anymore. Now you can just go do your fleet battle and hopefully you're all good. This is gonna save a lot of time, and thank you, CG. Thank you for this. This is really, really good. I can't believe I'm thanking you today, but I'm thanking you for that. However, I have a concern that the rewards here are also gonna be less. Because you no longer get rewards tied to each of the feats that you achieve, which means you do have to get all of them to get the end of the day rewards, which means if you miss one or you run out of time, you're, you just simply don't get anything other than some of that episode currency. It looks like you get 300 currently per event. Now we don't know how, how much things are gonna cost in the store yet. So we can't assess whether that's a good value or not. What we can assess is this picture of the prize box that they shared. And it very closely mirrors what we have now, except it's worth noting, it is less. Right now, unless my math was wrong and Swaga Wiki was wrong, you're guaranteed 65 crystals plus the daily like open box when you achieve them all, which is almost always five. Sometimes you get 10. Literally the other day, like three days ago, I got the 250. If this box picture below me is the same for every single day, and I imagine it will be, 75 crystals, 75 crystals, 75. That will guarantee a reduction in daily crystals over the course of the year. Like I got a 10 yesterday, which is equal. I normally get a five, which is less. But that one 250, whoa, that averages out to like two and a half or some months. I'm not doing the math. I'm guessing just off the top of my head of, of higher rate of return than that 75. Right? And that's not including all the other days that I get a 50 and a 25 because those pop in quite frequently. So this is almost guaranteeing a reduction in rewards. Again, we have to wait and see what that new episode currency gives you. Those That's the, the silver triangle below me. We don't know yet. So time will tell. Now this all comes together to me so far representing a net loss in rewards, a net decrease in required time for the game though. And I am all for that. So less time, less rewards, maybe that's appropriate. I don't know. Here's what I do know. Over time, when this game came out, there was like 
100, maybe 80 characters in the game, maybe less. I don't remember. I didn't play day one. What I do know, though, is that the number of characters in the game has doubled in the time I've played it. More than doubled. There are now 281 characters and 68 ships. So over time, the number of characters goes up, which means if you are a new player or you are starting a new ca an account for fun or, you know, you're taking a break and you're returning, the threshold between, you know, long-term players and newer players is huge. And the amount of gear you need continues to upgrade these as a new player continues to increase every two weeks. Literally, you need more Cairo, more Relic, more gear every two weeks that you delay starting the game. So like a person who started last week literally needs 400 Cairos less to maximize their roster than someone who will start next week because of the marquee character. Think about that. Just, just think about that for a second. Now, why am I complaining about this? Because of this stupid idea that they limit the number of assault battles each month. As a new assault battle comes in, we're going to take out a new assault battle. Screw you, CG. Like, seriously. Screw you. This is stupid. Because as you increase the number of characters in game, you have to increase the amount of rewards or else you ensure that people fall behind. And you know what? That's deliberate. It's deliberate because they want you now to go spend 20 bucks a month on episode pass. And they, they say that they're gonna tell a story. I guarantee you there's not gonna be a story in there. There's not gonna be a story. It's gonna be like six lines of dialogue in a marquee event. That is not a story, my friends. That is a money grab. This whole thing, to me, absolutely, completely reeks, to me, of money grab. And I am upset about it. I really am. I, I've, I've been on the fence about whether or not I even want to play this game anymore because of th this kind of behavior. And then this dropped and I started watching it and, and on Arnold's stream initially. <clears throat> and then I, so I went and I read it myself. And as I read it, I just kept seeing a whole lot of language that is open to interpretation, like saying free to play will receive an equivalent of. And how do you quantify equivalent? Again, what, what is your convert, con, uh, currency conversion rate? They were not clear. If they wanted to, they could have said, the free-to-play track will receive or may receive identical rewards. That, my friends, would have been nice. But they didn't say identical. They did not say you will get the Omicrons. They did not say that. They said you will get an equivalent. And then they, they rephrase things a couple of different ways in a couple of different places on the same topic, which leads to ambiguity. So, this is just disgusting to me. $840 a year, folks. I hope you don't pay for a penny of that. I, will, I, I do buy the $999 Conquest Pass. I will now reevaluate whether I do that. Anyway, hey, hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye.